you've had to hold some hard lines in your university leadership, uh, one having to do with um, sex segregated dorms. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why it was so important? Yeah, it's not really a hard line. I, I mean, we do have male and female dorms, but it wasn't hard. I, it was at my first day on the job, I went to the vice president for student affairs and I said, look, we're going back to single sex dorms, so I'll give you a year to get ready, but do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a year to get it was ready. It's <laughs> easier for me to do than my predecessors who have been priests uh, because I raised five children and I'm, I know what it's about. I, I, uh, and even for people who, unlike us, aren't uh, traditional in our sense about how young men and young women ought to behaving, be behaving towards one another. If you're really interested in the mental health of guys and girls, or if you're interested, you're concerned about binge drinking, they'll do much better uh, in single sex dorms. And that's been our that's been our experience since the switch. There was also a really interesting um, yeah, phenomenon that people noticed about a year and a half later. The number of Muslim students at Catholic University doubled. It turned out to be all about single sex dorms. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our Muslim students are Saudis, they're fairly traditional, and parents just didn't want to send their girls to places where there'd be guys living across the hall from them. I mean, American parents feel the same way. I think so. I think there are a lot of parents who feel that way, especially with some of the statistics that you mentioned associated with obviously drinking, which you mentioned already, but also hookup culture, performance in academics. Um, and even just the transformation that you see in a performative sense of living rather than living in a safe space. Yeah. I know that's a trigger word, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's also made it possible to do programming for girls and guys that is uh, more interesting to them. I, uh, the students here didn't, it's not because our students are weird, uh, it's because the push for co-ed dorms doesn't really come from students. It's, it comes from people from a generation that I belong to that's just very misguided about how we ought to raise young people. And so as a leader, did you get pushback from other leaders? No. Or? No, I got a lot of pushback from the culture, you know, the, the, mm. the media just wanted to know I was on CBS, I was on Fox, I was on CNN, I was on, on uh, NPR, I was in the Post, and uh, well, it's the Wall Street Journal, and they all wanted, uh, wanted to say this was just terrible and, and retrograde and going in the wrong direction. And, I, and I, my response was, give me a reason. I mean, just tell me <laughs> one reason why. And the best one that we got was, well, when they graduate, they're going to be living in apartments where there are guys or girls living next door. And I thought, what, like it takes practice? I don't know. <laughs> what? Uh, so no, it died because there was no argument on the other side. There is no good reason for putting people that age to get, um, together. And there are all sorts of good reasons. Uh, I mean, people are entitled to some privacy when they're bathing and sleeping. And uh, it's just not, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs>